Okay, so I'm back. Put on the sweater now. It's kind of chilly in here. Um, so, I uh, modified the settings on these. This guy. Kind of turned off. It don't do that from time to time. Um, yeah, so I changed the settings. Changed the settings ever so slightly. This guy, it takes a little bit while for this vacuum to pump down. Um, but that's okay. Um, so, let me give you a kind of like a tour of what I've done this far. So, um, this orange box over here is uh, what is called the uh, RF switch box. Um, I'll, uh, I'll give you a basic rundown of what everything is kind of after. So, this is, this is the RF switch box. This is uh, a temperature monitor for the whole cryostat apparatus. This is the cryostat. It's a big contraption that cools the atoms down to like 4 degrees Kelvin by uh, uh, pumping helium through uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, whole, the whole volume. It's pretty much a big uh, heat pump. Um, these are the controls for the lasers, the on-off switch. You can see that they've got keys in them because you don't want anybody turning them on when they shouldn't be. Right now they're all off. Um, this is a desktop for our computer, uh, our control monitoring system, we've got these four screens over here um, where I am logging my data. Um, these uh, top small national instrument panels are um, uh, assorted uh, 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 control panels for our, our network. Um, for our software guy Eric to mess around with. Um, these are all power supplies or RF signal generators. Um, again, an oscilloscope, basic basic lab equipment. Um, over here we've got the cavity again. Uh, some more desktops. Um, this, I'm not sure what this is, but I think it's supposed to be used for uh, controlling the system um, once we've got everything up and running properly. Um, a guy named Marty built that. I didn't build that. I did build this, uh, the optical pump slash TTL input uh, box. Um, I built this assembly over here, which is uh, RF signal generators, RF amplifiers, uh, power supply box for the RF signal amplifiers, um, uh, and a PCS3200 that I just kind of programmed through their analog switches. It's just up and down uh, analog switches for you know, actually programming the, the frequency in whatever range of you know, cycles that you want, whether it hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, etc. It says 3200 because it goes up to 3.2 gigahertz, which is about 3200 megahertz, which is 3200 megahertz. Um, I'm trying to get through the curtains over here. It's curtains. So, over here we've got the optics table. Right now the laser is off, so I don't have to wear my safety goggles, but if they were, I definitely would be. Um, and over here, we've got some more optics under panels, um, under boxes that I just kind of built. If we look under here, you can see the laser and the optics. Uh, same over here. We've got another optics board under the lasers um, and down here we've got the main uh, vacuum pump turbo that sucks all of the uh, all of the uh, dirt and dust and whatever out of our out of our trap of our experiment and over here we got uh, an elevated breadboard with a bunch of optics that uh, the cross that sits on top of, and all of this really just serves to to get light in from the lasers over uh, over there that you just saw. Get light from the lasers over there into our trap. Um, and as you can see, we've got a big electromagnet over here by uh, the first by the uh, uh, what is this? By the southern mirror, we've got uh, a guppy cam over here by the northern mirror. Um, this is the guppy camera. Uh, we've got under here, we've got a, um, uh, a, uh, 
uh, the word escapes me, but um, essentially what it is is uh, it's a camera that we use, the aperture, um, for, for uh, monitoring the actual ions that we have in the trap. Um, and we've got a couple more electromagnets over there because um, in quantum computing, essentially, what you use to uh, you know, get your, your well, in a, in a spin system based, in a spin based uh, quantum computer, you turn on the magnetic field and you can get the uh, magnetic moment or the spin of the electron to process, right? And so you can alter the configuration of the actual vector. Um, kind of like a kind of like a dreidel spinning around processing um, and the vector is just its angular momentum which way it's pointing I'm um, over here is just a, uh, a helium gauge setup that I that I assembled for monitoring the actual pressure um, and PSI and a few other measurements other other units of this vacuum system um, no of the, of the of the helium running through the lines into the crowd stack. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much everything for the most part right now. Um, there's a lot going on uh, other than that. You know, we've got uh, workstations and everything, spare parts. Um, here is uh, my favorite workbench. It's kind of messy right now because I haven't been using it. My co-workers have been, and they don't clean up after themselves. <laughs> um, yeah, leave that to to me. I'm the I'm the neat freak around here, so so really I need to get on my job, right? But um, yeah. So so uh, this is where the majority of like the soldering and stuff like that gets done. In case we're working on electronics, just the other day, a co-worker was uh, uh, building a. Uh, a capacitor breadboard to actually mount onto the resonator of our ion trap uh, because there was a mix up with that the capacitors couldn't be in the vault in the vacuum that we had them in they kind of just exploded so we don't want that and uh, we redid that um, but he redid that and uh, yeah so we turn this around as you can see a bit more wider view of the lab it's kind of busy it uh, doesn't look like much when you're uh, walking through, I guess, on the camera, but it's actually a lot. Um, it's actually a lot going on. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess uh, that'll be it for uh, this segment right now. And uh, I'll log uh, on with you. As soon as you insert the qualifications into